Hi folks, I'm back with another video in my series around alternative social networks. So today I'm going to be covering the Hubzilla social network. So maybe I can also just say who, you know, who this video is actually for. It's really directed at anybody looking for an alternative social network, especially to something like Facebook. Because Hubzilla is a macro blogging platform, not micro blogging like say Twitter where you've just got short feed posts. Hubzilla's actually got a rich functionality, so it's around photos, posting, events, chats, and even publishing, like wikis and web pages and that sort of thing. It's actually a rich functionality it's got. So there's a lot that it offers. It is part of the Fediverse, which means that it connects to all these various other social networks that you see around. I've covered some of these before. And then just also as a matter of uh, context, the guy that actually developed Hubzilla had previously developed Friendica. So he'd expanded with, a, with some extra functionality, which I'm going to get into. So just if you're wondering between the two of them, Hubzilla is actually the slightly newer one. Many of you are probably familiar with Mastodon, Diaspora, and so on. Another unique feature that Hubzilla has actually got is it's probably out of all of these networks in the Fediverse, it's probably got the most interconnectivity. Not only does it interconnect with just about all all the other social networks within the Fediverse. It can also cross post to networks such as Twitter and one or two others as well. So if you're looking for something that you can sort of find your home in with regards to your blogging and your, your publishing and that sort of thing, Hubzilla could be a very, very serious consideration for you because from there you can publish outwards. For example, I do my publishing to my own Drupal website. I actually compose my posts in Hubzilla and my website is actually just pulling it in from an RSS feed from Hubzilla. So even in that way, it can act as your sort of your blogging central, central, you know, sort of central to your blogging. Then the other thing just to mention maybe is all around protocols. Although ActivityPub is quite popular on, on the Fediverse, it's got a number of shortcomings around privacy, uh, encryption, uh, deletion and a few other things. So chiefly within the, the Hubzilla network itself, the various Hubzilla hubs, they are using the Zot protocol. When it interconnects to Diaspora, it uses Diaspora protocol and various of the others, it's using ActivityPub. So it's got a rich functionality around that. So within the Hubzilla network itself, they, it offers a lot of additional functionality, which you're not going to get across the rest of the Fediverse, unfortunately. So for example, if you were to delete a post, uh, or to edit a post that would be updated within the Hubzilla hubs, but not necessarily if it's already gone out to Mastodon or Diaspora or or elsewhere. And maybe I can also just ex explain why I chose to use Hubzilla. Uh, the reasons were chiefly, first of all, I do a lot of my hosting through cPanel hosting sites, which is using Softaculous for installation of whatever I'm going to be using. So my Drupal, my web trees, that sort of thing. It's a one or two click install with a script file already built into cPanel and it just installs. Hubzilla happens to be one of those options uh, where Friendica is not, for example, one of those options and neither is Mastodon. So it was just also for me from that perspective, quite a logical reason why I, I chose to use Hubzilla. It has got a few more adv advanced functions over Friendica as I've mentioned. And the other thing you can also do with it is you can set up multiple channels. So you've got a channel or an activity stream basically within Hubzilla, which you're used to seeing say on Facebook or anything else, but you can also create multiple of those channels. So one channel could be, uh, for example, around just maybe technology blogs and posts and things that you interact on. And another one could be around say the environment you could have different followers for each of those channels, different permissions, access rights, wikis, etc. So it creates a whole environment for you that is sort of separated, which is again a nice concept because instead of just following one profile with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of posts, you could then elect to have say three of these channels and people could follow just your general posts or they could follow just your technology posts or they could follow just your environmental posts. You can do a lot of that within one channel, but it's got a nice way that it actually separates everything for you. 
And then the last reason really was that it does offer a lot of enhanced privacy. So for people that are privacy focused, Hubzilla probably offers a lot more than most of the other networks as well. And I'll cover some of that when we go through the, the settings and so on. We can maybe just go onto the Hubzilla page so long and have a look there. So there, as I said before, it's macro blogging. It's actually been around since about 2012, 2015 or so. So it's, it's running for a good 15, 17, 18 years old now. The other thing of, this is of note as well is that where we talk about nodes often on the Fediverse network, the same concept applies to Hubzilla. It's a decentralized network. They just call them hubs. So you, you can have a number of hubs all individually managed with different rules, uh, different admins, that sort of thing. I can also just mention there that the admin, the hub admin, cannot actually view what have been encrypted or, or private posts. All they can do is they can block users or censor users or channels, but they can't actually see the content if it's not public. So again, the privacy focus is very good. As I said, the, the connecting side, it's very, very broad. And I did mention a few of the things. There was granular privacy settings. You've got forums. So forums, for example, it's a different type of channel. You'd have, obviously have a personal channel, whatever you're going to create. And again, I'll show you just now the, the types of channels. But you can also create forums. There's a type of channel called a forum channel. And that's very much equivalent to a Facebook group or what people on Facebook would be used to. So there is that type of facility as well. But I think what I just wanted to mention is there's another incredibly unique feature around Hubzilla itself that no other social network actually has got. So one of the concerns people have often got on the decentralized uh, social um, media sites, in fact, even Facebook or Twitter, if Facebook or Twitter or any of your platforms were to close down, what happens to your followers? What happens to your posts? Where do you go to? How do you recover what you've got and how do you get it in somewhere else? I mean, I've exported my Google Plus posts, but you know what? They've never come in in the same way to another network and I couldn't just bring all those followers across. So Hubzilla has actually got another very, very unique feature. And what they've described it as is uh, a nomadic identity. Essentially, what you do with this nomadic identity is you have got a profile sitting on a particular hub. You can now go and create another profile on a different hub and you can synchronize the two or you can clone from the one across to the other one and they will actually work transparently. So what happens here is if your primary hub, whichever the one of the two you've, you've defined as your primary hub, is for whatever reason, say it's deleted or just becomes unavailable for 20 minutes or half an hour or, or an hour or whatever the case is, you can go and post from your secondary profile on the other hub. When the first one comes up, they will synchronize again as normal. No one will even actually know the difference. So that's actually a, an incredibly unique f uh, feature. Same thing, you know, if, if the guy happens to, for example, shut down the primary node, you just carry on on the secondary one, you can go create another primary one or another secondary one somewhere else. So it takes away that whole concern and worry about what happens to my followers, my posts, that sort of thing. What if the instance is down for, you know, whatever reason? So I think that's actually incredibly unique. So anybody that's got those types of concerns, I mean, that is not even something that Facebook or Twitter gives you. If Twitter shuts down, you haven't got a secondary profile that you can just continue on. So I think that really cannot actually be underestimated, the uniqueness of that. Now, I should just say that obviously exists only within between Hubzilla hubs. Uh, again, because of the protocol, that ZOT protocol is ensuring the encryption, the transparency, the synchronizing and so on between those uh, profiles of yours. So you would obviously create it within Hubzilla itself. Anybody following you anywhere else from Mastodon or Friendica or Diaspora is going to just be following your profile as normal. They're not going to get some of that enhanced functionality, but um, for all intents and purposes, they're going to see you wherever they are as if you know you, you in their feed really. So I think without further ado, I'm going to do my, my normal approach with regards to going through the menus and what it looks like and ending up with a post. There's quite a lot to cover. So what I'll also be doing is I'm going to be putting an index below this video on YouTube 
and on Library TV. That's my other video site. And it will be indicating chapters that you can jump quickly, maybe between the various sections of the video, just in case, you know, some parts are not that interesting to you. I'm going to try and sort of cover everything. It's very difficult to do justice to Hubzilla because it's got an incredible amount of functionality. And I'm really going to just touch over uh, many of them just to show you what it, what it does. So this is actually my main Hubzilla channel. You see it's got a cover page over there uh, and a name with an address. So if you are, for example, on anywhere else in the Fediverse, Mastodon, Diaspora, or whatever the case is, if you look up this address over here, if you highlight this address anywhere, you'll be able to follow me from anywhere else on the Fediverse. That's just basically the Hubzilla address. If I had a second channel or third channel, it would be whatever the name would be here, Donny at Hubzilla.gadgeteer. So the, the Hubzilla.gadgeteer.co.za is my hub. And the prefix part over here is actually indicating the channel name. I've got the boxy theme on at the moment, the light boxy theme. Uh, when I switch, when I go show you the themes a little bit later, I will switch to the dark mode and we can just see what it looks like. But just to get an idea, this is really what the page is going to look like. Down the left hand side, you're going to see uh, some profile information that I've chosen to share. You'll see also connections and you'll see if I hover over these connections, look there, it says uh, diaspora.org naturalnews.com. I'm not actually even too sure what that is. Uh, Plus Spora is also a Diaspora uh, channel. There's another Join Diaspora. There's one of my other channels at Diaspora. So you'll see these are from all over the Fediverse. That's actually my RSS feed there. There's quite a few Plus Sporas and Diaspora followers of this channel. Down the middle here is your activity feed. So this is what I've been posting. This is what the posts will look like. And if you just expand them, you'll see it brings an image in. You can put hashtags. It's got categories over here. You've got also little emoticons you can have very similar to MeWe Network and to um, Facebook and so on. You can like, you can dislike. A lot of this functionality, though, of course, can be switched on and off by the hub admin. I've switched a lot of it on, but in some cases they might have, um, you know, disabled some of this. Down the left-hand side over here, we just missed it, are the categories. So these are categories that I've used when I've posted. Again, if you just click on these, it'll quickly filter to anything relating to alcohol, amateur radio, Apple, whatever the case is over there. And... On the right hand side over here, you've got a couple of contextual links. Some of these will change as well, depending on where you are on the site. Here I've got some event information because I did book an event for today to do the video. So you'll see there'll be a little icon over there. It would often be closed. A little icon will indicate what events you've got. You can mark them as seen or click on them to go to the event. And then just to cover the top bar, the navigation bar over here, you've got, you can go straight to profile. I'll go through these just now. Edit profile settings, your channel manager. Remember I said you can have more than one channel. That will be your channel's settings, the current channel you're on. And this you won't normally see unless you're a hub admin. Then you'll have an admin function over there as well. Then on the right hand side, these nav icons over here, you, you can set up which apps and so on must appear over here. So I've specifically set show these over here. And this is the little drop down menu. Again, you can indicate what must appear in the menu. And one of the other strengths that Hubzilla has got is it's got a terrific amount of additional add-ons and functionality. So a lot of these are add-ons, like for example, the calculator. If I click over there, this is actually just merely a third party add-on that somebody has developed. So some of these we'll be covering and I'll be finishing off going through some of this as well. Uh, the public stream is all my public posts that I've made. The view that I will typically go to is 
uh, view your channel home page that's again my pages view your network stream which is the people that are in my network so here you're going to see a few other people's posts as well these will be people that I'm following I think they make good use of space as well so even though these posts are a little bit longer you can expand them as well that gives you an idea though it's very functionally rich on the posting you've got nice clear headings over here uh, who posted it when categories and a lot of other information I'll finish off the video by showing you how a post gets put together but I think let's start off on the top left then with what we've got so if I go to view profile that is the, pr the main profile view now you see it in a slightly bigger screen this can have a lot more information and just for information this for example operating system that was a that's a custom field that I added to profiles so you can add a number of custom fields that people can choose from or put information in as well gives it a whole uniqueness as well I think you're not just sitting with the standard you know what you were given so if we then have a look at more detail around the profiles we can go to edit profile and here you're going to get an idea of a little bit more information you can you can do you can clone obviously export import you can change your photos and things as well over here you can put in a birthday you'll notice for gender as well they're given a lot of uh, options it's not just binary so again very user friendly you can give it a description you've got a lot more information on location as well relationship as well you can you've got a lot of um, options there for status and you can add who and since date sexual preferences uh, there you go as well I think that covers most and then under miscellaneous here you've got URLs political religious views tell us about yourself likes dislikes books literature this is a lot of a standard and as I said you'll see here I would already added a a custom one over here as well you do that under admin of course so this is just the user's profile that they've seen so that sort of covers profiles largely we can just look at privacy groups the the reason for privacy groups really is that when you're making a post you can elect to either post just to public which everybody will see and it's going to replicate of course or can be followed from anywhere else in the Fediverse but you can also limit your post to just say whatever you decided these are completely you, you can you can add a group with any description that you want here and you can also decide if it's visible to any of your other channels but the fact of the matter was so I was keeping track for example at one stage of ex Google Plus users uh, friends in one group other contacts and if you're making a post you can make the visibility just visible to one or more of these particular groups and it's also not going to replicate elsewhere and it's um, so if you posted something say for example and it was only for friends then the nice thing is your family are not going to see it and neither are your work colleagues going to see it but then just remember it's not going to be public the channel manager so this is again a user thing I've got one channel active at the moment but here is I could have had two or three or four or more channels created and you'll see the options for creating a channel I'm mostly on social mostly public but you've got other options for channels like I said you could have community forums which can be private restricted mostly pri a public special purpose you can just give the channel any name there that you want and a short nickname as well remember that'll be forming part of your address as well so that, that's where you're going to create extra channels then the user settings this is essentially now the user settings for the individual user you could put your name you can choose your time zone you can put a default post location if you want to uh, or you can use the browser location you can flag it as adult content you can when you're uploading photos as well you can decide on the the naming format that it gives it and what sort of folder it goes into 
Under the security, I've already indicated my feed is mostly public, it's fine. I've said yes, you can suggest new users to me. You can allow others to tag your post or not. You can also set an auto expiry date. I have in the settings anyway allowed me as the user here to turn a lot of these things on or off, but you can force them on or force them off and you can lock them in that position where the user can't change it. So it's up, again up to the admin. Notification settings, quite a rich functionality here as well uh, of what you want to be notified about and whether you want um, to have an email sent or just visual notifications. And you can also set how many days in advance you want to be notified of events. And then on display settings, this is where the theme comes in. I've only got the one main theme loaded at the moment. What it has got is a couple of distant schemes that you can change. So I was on uh, Focus Boxy. I'm going to change it now to Dark. I'll just say Submit and that's your Dark theme. You can also, cust as the individual user, you can do some customizing of the nav bar, for example, width, and a few other things you can play around with here. And then on the content settings, this is for when you're posting actually, show emoticons as images, provide channel menu in the navigation bar that was actually up at the top over here. Enable user zoom on mobile devices. So there's a couple of things here as well that you can you can set. So let's go and have a look then I think at the admin settings uh, before I move on to the other parts of it. The admin settings as I said is only going to be the hub owner. So you obviously start off with a bit of a summary and you're going to see here there's only one account. I've actually set up my own hub for myself just to give me full rich functionality and the fact that no one's going to shut my hub down really. I've got my own hub going. I could also, and I haven't done it yet, I'm probably going to maybe think about cloning this as well so that I've got a second one. If anything does happen to my hosting, I can always continue on the other post immediately and then sync back to this one again. So that's something I'm probably going to do for myself. Then you start off here with the, with the main site settings. So here you're going to see things like banner, logo, and site name. These are the things you're going to be seeing or the, the users will be seeing at the top of the screen on the page there. And as well as what gets replicated to the central directory for Hubzilla and for the Fediverse. Because remember, if you are sharing your hub, then they're going to be seeing this sort of information. Then you've got various of the email addresses, uh, system languages, which is the basic theme, a login at the, on the home page. You can preserve the home page URL. There's the directory server URL. So that is the server that is publishing my server information or the hub information to. And at the moment, you've got a choice of three, but you can also, you could also customize those if you needed to. Then this would be registration um, for new users. But you'll see, I've already said there on the text, if somebody tries to go there, only by invite for now. Uh, there's a couple of defaults. I've said, does the site allow new user registration? No, it doesn't. Uh, I'm not running this for other people, but I could have if I want to. Um, and I've clicked on there by invitation only. But otherwise, you could set things like minimum age. Um, you could also have paid content. It is possible. Uh, look, where, where is it located? And various other things. And then certain policies over here, if it was a new, for new users, it would, it, would in, it would want to verify the email address first. Allow feed as a connection. You've got a couple of other options here that you can just set as well. And filters you can. So this is also, for example, there are also places here on Hubzilla as the hub admin where you can set up filters to exclude linking to certain other hubs or sites. And then you've got a bit of other information here. This is to deal with the image converting and uploading of images. If you needed to set proxies, network timeouts, delivery intervals, these are just syncing settings that you're going to be using to sync to other hubs or to the Fediverse. So that's basically the site info. Accounts, these are going to be the user accounts on your hub. 
So, you know, here you might have 200 or 50 or whatever the case users. And this is also where you're going to be blocking and unblocking a user or censoring a user as well, or even deleting user if, if necessary. Then for each user, they could create one or more channels. This is going to give you uh, a list now of channels. And this is where you would, for channels, you could allow or disallow code, or you could censor or uncensor a channel or delete a channel as well without affecting the underlying user. So that's where that's going to happen. Security settings. You could block the public. So you, you've got ways of also take, making your Hubzilla hub completely isolated if you want to. If you wanted to run this inside a corporation or organization or a, whatever the case is, and you don't want to be federating with anybody else, you just want to run this as your own private Hubzilla slash Facebook slash whatever for your family or your friends. You could also turn these things off if you want to. So, okay, I haven't blocked public. You can provide a cloud root directory because another unique feature with, well, not unique necessarily, but, but it is a feature of Hubzilla is you've got cloud storage, basically file storage. Mine has got about a terabyte plus of storage included. So people could be using that for file sharing or uploading of photos or whatever the case is. Show the total disk space available. Uh, you can set transport headers and a few other things here. This is where you could block or allow certain email domains. You know, if you found that you're getting a lot of spam from particular areas or people trying to spam or, or you know, register or whatever the case is, you can block them over here or you could allow it to only a particular one or two. You know, if it was an organization, again, you'd put your organization email domain in there and prevent anybody else from being able to join. So, and this is where you would, you could block or allow or whitelist particular sites. You can do the same for channels as well. Remember, there could be other channels across Hubzilla on other hubs as well. So you'd go block individual ones if there were complaints or anything about them. Features is just a synopsis of a couple of the features. This is where I said you could turn on or off certain features and then lock them. So I've said, yes, I want a calendar day to start on Monday. And, but I haven't locked it. So it's going to be a default, but users can override that and make it a Sunday if they want to. If I went and changed that to locked, then it's going to be Monday for everybody. And the same goes for most of these others, things like event time zones to be changed. Tag clouds, for example, I have tag clouds on. They're very useful for seeing what's being discussed and uh, what you can quickly filter on. The blog and list mode, I haven't got it on, but you can have it on, and I've left it uh, as an option for people to, to put on. Then connection filtering, it's allowed. Conversations as well, I've got various options that are uh, activated, like starring of posts, replying on comments, you can turn off replies by default. You can, you can also have or not have disliking of posts, I've got it on. And emoji reactions, this is the central directory. And I've said, yes, give us advanced search. This is the editor. And you can switch on or off again. Things like if you're allowed to have large photos, I've disabled. Post categories. Uh, even more encryption is where the person would provide their own encryption key for the post and literally communicate that to their family or whatever the case is. Now, that is a post that is fully encrypted. Um, which again, like I said, that was a unique feature, quite a unique feature anyway with regards to Hubzilla. But yes, it's part of the bigger Fediverse, but it's got it's catered for privacy and so on as well. Voting buttons. So all these things you'll see when I show you posts, you can you can put them on and off, uh, content expiry, that sort of thing. Navigation channel selection. This is the network. Again, whether they can filter or not. Photos, photo location is on, but it optionally, again, like I said, it can be switched off. And then certain control over the profiles and so on as well. So these, these are just some of the built-in features. Then add-ons. So add-ons, there are actually repos that you get on Hubzilla. So almost like Linux or Ubuntu. Many people are going to be familiar with Ubuntu's PPAs. You know, you've got the default community uh, repos or repositories and then you can add on Ubuntu through those adding those PPAs you can add additional repositories and what this brings to Hubzilla is if you subscribe to these repositories is a number of 
additional add-ons and you'll see some of these I haven't got enabled. I haven't got core, what is it? Core cart utilities for orders and payments. I'm not doing that sort of thing, but I could just tick it on or tick it off over there. And you'll see if there's any particular options you, you need to set for it there. So a couple of these things I have got on and I'll just scroll down this because it's probably of interest to people just to see you know what sort of add what sort of add-ons there are as I, as I say I haven't got everything activated chess is apparently quite a popular thing I don't know why but for some reason there is a sort of a interactive remote chess playing game and that in Upzilla and that's where you'd activate it and if you go to the chess app you'd be able to play against other people there's chord generators yeah content importer custom home pages this is, for example, now where also Diaspora protocol to connect to anybody in Diaspora. They don't use Activity Pub and Zot. So that is an, it was an add on, and I had basically switched it on over here. I want to enable it. Then also, I've got Diaspora stats enabled. If you want to accept donations, you'd switch that on over there. Uh, Dream with posts. So, so you can post out to various other networks you're going to see down here now as well. Flashcards. Friendica photo migrator, that would be to bring in somebody's photos from Friendica if they're migrating into Abzilla. You can have fuzzy locations so that your location isn't accurate. You can switch on or off the gallery over here. There's GNU social, so that will be uh, interconnectivity with status net. There's the protocol as well. Uh, Gravatar support. What else have we got? The UI tour I've got off at the moment. There's IRC chat plugin as well, where you'd activate that. Uh, LDAP authentication. The like banner. Mahjong game. There's a few. There are a couple of games. Markdown. That's for markdown in the editing of the posts. More choices. More moods. More pokes. So I've added. Remember poke, Facebook pokes? Well, that's on here as well. Uh, that is also where you would lock out the federating over here. It's an um, add-on you'd put in as well to, to help lock it down. Notifying admin. What else have we got? Open ID authentication. Open street map functionality for photos. That those that have got locations on, you could click on them and it'll open it up in a map. Uh, mailing apps. Pwik analytics. If you want to enable that, you can. Or you can also have it disabled here. Pong the game, activity pub protocol. So I've got that active. Cross posting as well to pump IO. Smiley packs, smiley buttons. You could have a preferred start page if you want to as well, apart from the standard one. Um, blocking of channels that gives users the ability to block channels individually if they want to there this is an interesting one just to mention quickly the Twitter API so this will allow cross posting out to Twitter so again remember what I said you could do your blogging and stuff from within Abzilla and it'll push out your public only it'll push out your public posts across to Twitter into a Twitter account and also what I've managed to do was you can also get it to follow a Twitter account and to, to auto post from that Twitter account. So for example, you do it in reverse. In other words, if you had a Twitter account and you're doing all your posting there, you could get it to pull from Twitter across into Abzilla. But, you know, the functionality is richer in Abzilla. You might as well post on the Abzilla side and push to Twitter, quite honestly. And that's where you can also put on WYSIWYG uh, formatting when you're updating your, your status and so on. So these are some of the add-ons that I do have at the moment. We've actually already covered themes, but I've only got the one installed. But if you were admin and you had more themes enabled, you'd be able to enable them and disable them over there. You could inspect the queue. That is for anything that's been waiting to sync across to other hubs and to uh, the Fediverse. Profile fields. So this is where you're going to set up that custom field I talked about a little bit earlier on. You'll see there I've gone and added a, a custom field called operating system. And I've just given it a type name there as well. Um, but this is actually this is actually the full list of... Uh, so in other words, these are still available fields if you wanted to add them. And that's where you go and you create that, that custom field. Let me just check. Oh yeah, there we go. You can choose what sort of input it is help text that sort of thing 
So that's there. Database updates is just if there's anything pending over there. No, there isn't. Certain of the add-ons have got additional settings that you can set. So for example, say street map, uh, open street map, sorry. Then there'll be certain additional things like the, the server address and default zoom and that sort of thing you need to set. That's status net. As I said, you can cross post. There's your Twitter one. That's for cross posting and receiving Twitter. I thought I had cart actually off, um, but anyway, okay, there, there's cart and, and your logs. So that really covers the left hand side menu, then we've really covered all of those so far. So if we have a look on the right hand side here, what I wanted to show was this over here, view the directory. This is the directory of your hub that you've belonged to. So you're not going to see other hubs or anybody else, but this will be all the various users. So if you were a member of this hub, you'd be able to see the other 15, 20, 100 people or whatever and sort on them, search, find channels, that sort of thing over here. That's where this happens. You can also view friend suggestions So remember, friends are going to be appearing in the form of channels. So you could actually say here, yeah, no, don't suggest these. I don't want to see these again. Or no, yes, I do. And I want to connect. And then you'd connect over here. You can also filter on various of these cloud tags over, over here as well. So if I wanted to look just people say from Melbourne or Linux related or music related, that will help me filter over there as well. You can also manage your, your own connections. These are the people that you've connected to. So this is not necessarily on your own hub. Like I showed out before, this is somebody on social home. Here's somebody at Diaspora and so on as well. So here, if you go and edit a particular connection, it'll tell you when their last update was and so on. You can also set the affinity. I've got them set for more public to sort of above acquaintances, but you could actually stretch them all the way down and say, no, actually they're family, then they'd be able to see family posts as well. But let me just leave that where it is. And I can also say which of my profiles this contact is available to. So remember I said you could have more than one uh, profile or, ch or channel. This is going to allow you to, to do that. And then of course you can also apply certain filtering against this particular contact. So only certain posts or block certain posts. So if a person posts a lot about say Linux and you don't want to watch Linux, but you're interested in something else that they are posting, you could say, do not import posts with this text and put Linux in there. Again, it's got a, a wealth of functionality around not only your privacy settings, but even filtering settings, what you, what you see and what you don't see. So you can go very, very granular if you want to in terms of setting up what you see in your feed. And then on the actual permissions itself, you can see if there's any default settings that they've got set at the moment. And you can override certain of these settings over here as well from your side. So again, like I said, tremendous amount of granularity in the, in the settings. We've talked about these views already. This was, like I said, just as view your home page. I think what we can actually do is let's start also looking then at a, at a few of the functions. So what I wanted to show you as well was just around the event management, because that is also a feature that, for example, Facebook and Friendica and so on do have. You can set up an event and then you can invite people to it. So Hubzilla works slightly differently. If you go to your calendar view. Let's go to calendar. You see I have got a, a, a setting for today. You can obviously change the the views here from month to week today or to list for the month or list for the day or whatever the case is. And you've also got multiple calendars here. So just remember you can create multiple calendars you can also have CalDev calendars where it links in, say, to a Google calendar or an Apple calendar or whatever the case is. And you can create new CalDev. So what's nice is, yes, you can import, but you can also link to external calendars. And people can link to your calendar if you've allowed or if there's public access. 
they could sync from from this calendar so you could be using this for uh, group appointments or for an organization or for a group or whatever the case is as well but this particular appointment for some reason i don't know i'm not i don't know why i'm not sure i'm seeing time zone which calendar and the title i'm not seeing oh now i am seeing it okay that's very odd i wasn't seeing i'm not sure why i wasn't seeing this earlier so you you can have categories for your calendars again for faltering or for interests You've got to start and end time. I wasn't seeing this earlier on. I had to drag the stuff up and down on the appointment. But anyway, there it is. Uh, you've got a description and you've got a location. So you can type all this information in and you can update. I think this, cal this event was already set. If So you can actually take the appointment and just move it if you if you need to update it. Or you can... Uh, drag it for longer or shorter and you can see the time changing at the top of the appointment there that's how you do it if you did a new event you'll see it does also ask you here who who will see it because this, what actually happens is the invite goes into the person's feed it's not arriving as a separate email or anything it, it, it's a its visibility in this case will either be in your public feed so anybody could see it in RSVP and accept it or only your clients or only your family or friends or only me if it's just something for me to remember or you can have a custom selection where you can pick of literally just individuals or you could choose one or more of your of your privacy groups as well and then let me just show you what it will look like because if you if you set up the appointment and you saved it how they're gonna see it is like this in their feed they're gonna see this title for the for the invite it's going to show the start and the end date it's from me there's a description there's a location it's got tags they can also make comments about it over here underneath they can ask questions or comment to others but the important part is this they can i will attend i will not attend or i might attend and that's where the the rsvping comes in and now you can see that it'll say there's one person attending there's maybe one person and or I'm not attending, you know, whatever the case is there. Basically, on the appointment itself over here, if you click, if you just click on the attending, it'll show you the two or three or four people there who are attending, or in the case of not attending, or whatever the case is there. So that's really how that works. So that that is sort of events. It's not too complicated. What I just want to also show then is this one over here. Install more apps. So if you click here this is a list of all the available apps the ones that say update i've already installed so you as the individual user on hubzilla you, you there are a whole lot of apps that the admin the hub admin makes available but you can decide which you want to install or uninstall so for example card dev i haven't installed you could just click on it there to go and see what is it about okay it's about caldev capable address book if you click to install over there it will install Or update or whatever the case is so you could also go on if you click on it will take you to the the app itself and a lot of these you saw already when I was going through the admin settings but you can see there's quite a lot so files of course will be your cloud storage if you click on it that is a view that is a icon view you can go to a list view over there you can add files and you can create new folders and so on as well there. So, like I said, this is where you'll add the functionality. The other thing I can just point out here is I have pinned a whole lot of these to, to the menu already, things like mood and notes and things. But you can go to arrange apps to change this order over here. So you can you can drag move them up or down. Uh, in the order and that's of course the order of the nav bar apps over here on the top right as well if we go to add apps it's a slightly different view it's showing the apps you've already got this is where if you click over there it's going to remove it from the app tray or add it to the app tray and that is the one for the nav bar to add it or take it away from the nav bar so not all of these I've got appearing in the menu at the moment but another interesting thing is if you have any problems as an admin with changing of domain names and addresses like I had, if 
you click up there and you go to say bookmarks there this is where you would set any uh, URLs if you've got any URL issues this is just a place to go and look for by the way but here you can change the URL the, I the icon and I'm not too sure what the price of the app is I think that's to do with the cart and the, the costing if it was something people had to pay for it to get access to so that's where that is and the other thing we can just have a look at is the photo gallery so this is just a gallery view of a couple of the latest photos for my profile okay but if we actually want to go look at the photos themselves and you'll see here you've got the albums on the left hand side with how many photos are in an album at the moment so I could go for example to test and there's a couple of photos if you just hover over them you'll see the title of the photo and if you click into it you can have comments so people can comment on your photo they can like or dislike the photo as well and you can also opt to use it as your profile photo or as the cover photo or you can edit the photo and this will allow you just to change certain information like rotating of it you could flag it as adult if it was necessary you could change its visibility as well that again only friends or family or colleagues or whatever can see it and you could change the title and so on there as well so that's essentially photos what we can just do is I can just show you quickly how you'd add a photo you would also again give it a title you could choose which album it went into when you're uploading it you can also just say whether it's going to be appear inside a status post for the profile as well and then you would just click upload to select the photo and in it goes so that's in essence photos again not very complicated but I do like the fact that it's got place for comments and liking and so on again so it can be used as a photo album then I think we can just have a look at one or two other things here I've showed the calculator the calendar there are chat rooms so you can set up chat rooms or not have them you could have multiple chat rooms and you'll see I've already got one chat that I've set there already with an expiration of 120 minutes so if anybody went in there now they could go and type uh, whatever and you'll see you've got some highlighting uh, some formatting buttons here that you can use as well you can choose a, a status as well toggle notifications on or off and you can also bookmark the room and that is now where the the comments are going to and the chats are going to stream here so the idea of the disappearing chats is that it basically just keeps if, if it's something you don't want a whole lot of history for or yeah, there can be other reasons why you want it to disappear for whatever reason, but that that it's actually quite a nice feature as well. And then it'll just keep like the last hour or two hours of conversation. You can delete the room. So each person can have multiple chat rooms. And like I said, they can have different visibility. You can decide the visibility, who the audience is. It can be a chat room just for your family or just your friends or public. Each person can can set that up. So that's quite nice done connections already I did show files already that was your your cloud storage you can also give guest access quite interesting you would just give the, the any say for example you wanted somebody just to come and visit your profile and play around a bit with it and maybe you didn't have public access you'd go in here set a login name give a password and say when it's going to expire and submit and then you just send it to them in email and then they could just log in play with it and then like I said it expires and they're out again so nice feature not many networks do that i think it's very nice this is where you would invite new members to to join you've got a couple of language options as well not a tremendous amount but covers most of the major languages uh, you've got mail as well you've got a you can set a mood um, mellow uh, let's just see we've done photos i've got notes you can set some notes up as well and just keep track of a couple of things uh, within hubzilla 
photos we've covered. Poking is just uh, like the Facebook poke. I'll do posts last. We've done the public stream, searching stream. Oh, web pages I can just briefly show. So web pages, like I said, Hubzilla can also do publishing. And web pages, well, you can import a site. You can export what you've got here as a site. You can set up menus, layouts, pages, that sort of thing. I, for example, have created one page here, a home page. And if you click on it, that will be sort of the address. So if you gave out this URL at the top, this is the page you're looking at at the moment, actually. So if I go back here and I go to edit, you'll see the format for this page is uh, BB code. So what's nice is here you can just quickly select from your menu buttons here. So if I wanted to underline this over here, I'm just going to go there and I'll say underline. And you can attach images and upload files and various other things to this. So the content type, I've actually said it's allowed to be changed, but if you, when you're creating pages, you've got these various options for the different types of content. So if you feel more comfortable doing it in Markdown or HTML, then you can you can pick those. So there's quite a bit of flexibility over there. Uh, let me just say, and then of course, as before, you can decide who can actually see the page as well. So people that are not logged into Hubzilla are by default only gonna be able to see public or they won't see anything that's, that's not public. In other words, if it's shared with friends or whatever, those people have to have logged in to see it. So if I go back to the page now, you should see the underlining there. Oh, there we go. There's the underlining I just did. So look, it's not a, it's not going to be a full blown Drupal type functionality or WordPress, but yeah, you can create certainly web pages with menus and that sort of thing here. So that's something if you just want to put some basic web pages together, you can use your Hubzilla for that. It's also got wikis. So wikis are just editable pages again, very similar type of thing. I just put a few things in here, but you see for this particular wiki. So I've got two two wikis here. One is called JSA Core Messaging, and another one is called Test BB Code Content. Watch on the left here. If I click on this wiki and then also look at the address, it'll change there from Wiki Gadgeteer to the address of that wiki and its page, its home page. And here will be the different pages, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. There's a second page over there that I've got. And you'll see at the top, this address will also change. So if you need to link to these pages, you could cut and paste these URLs and give it out to people and so on as well. So basic wiki functionality as well. And I think we've covered sort of most of really what I wanted to particularly cover. I think the last thing then really is to go and do a post. So let me, instead of, I'm not going to use the shortcut to post over here. I'm just going to go back to the home feed. So if this is where you are now and you wanted to do a post, you click over there in share and you just give it a title. I could use, say that as a title. Categories, you're going to type with commas in. So you can have multiple categories, technology, uh, radio, or whatever the case is. And this is now where you're going to type your text in. Uh, text is not spelt right. So if you click on it, that's just a browser functionality, by the way. Text, type your text in here, and you can add a link. So the text itself, you can certainly highlight and do a few things there. You can attach or upload an image. So if I took, say, where's an image here? Yeah, this one over there, open. It'll upload and insert this image into the post and you'll see there it's already appeared in the preview below. The title is highlight is bolded and highlighted as well. You can put a link in here. And oopsie. I tend to put them in from posts like this, but um, you could also just So 
say there, paste, and it inserts it like that. What what it'll do also if you've inter if you've inserted a link, it's also going to include a preview of the link with a photo underneath as well. So it's also why I like using this for blogging because when it creates the post and I'm pulling it into Drupal through the RSS feed for my Drupal blog, it includes this post with the heading, the uh, categories, the text, as well as the preview of the post or the site that I'm linking to. So I've just found that actually very, very convenient. Then you can also embed for existing photos that are already on your uh, Hubzilla Hub or on your channel. So this would be say from your album, your photo album. You could set a location over here if you wanted to where you are right now. You can set an expiry date for the post. Remember this is going to be applicable really for Hubzilla posts. So anything that's public and that's been replicated out to Mastodon or Diaspora, this is not going to be applicable. But if you're sharing this post with only clients or friends or family, you can set an expiry date and that'll be quite valid. You can also then schedule it for a published date and this will work for everybody. So what will happen is if I put a, a time, a future time and date in here, it at, only at that point will it actually post it and from then on it will replicate out into the Fediverse as well. So very nicely you can, this has been in Hubzilla since the beginning. Uh, many other networks don't even have it actually. And this is where you will set encryption text. So you'll give an, a secret passphrase here. Again, anything outside Hubzilla is going to see this as encrypted. It's not going to work for them. But if you set a passphrase here that only you know, you can share this with one or two people. And then, like I said, only they will be able to see it if they type the passphrase in. So again, this is a, a pretty unique feature, very privacy orientated that Hubzilla has got. And this is where you can toggle the voting on and off and basically people could vote yes or no or whatever the case is for the for the post. And you can disable comments here as well on your post if you want to. And on the right hand side we've got the preview already open over there at the moment. This one is interesting here, the share. This is where you would tick on to post this to Twitter as well. So not all your posts have to go. You can um, switch on or off what goes to. At the moment, I've only got cross-posting set up for my Twitter account and for my Friendicare account if I wanted to. But that's where you'd go set that up. Again, that's what I'm saying is that Hubzilla can be your main blogging platform and you can push out from here to, to other accounts. And this is, of course, where you'd set again the group the permissions as to what group is going to be able to see your post and again you can take custom permissions as well if you want to and that's basically it then it's share I think oh this is just options that you can enable or disable over there for the post as well and then it's share and it's done that's posting but I think you'll agree with me then sort of in wrap up Hubzilla has got an incredibly rich functionality it's got probably the most cross-posting and interoperability with other Fediverse and other social networking accounts as well. And along with, you know, your basic event management, your photo management, publishing of wikis and web pages, it's probably up there as one of the most functional social media sites that there is. I mean, it should almost be at the center because, you know, from there, I said, you can see everything really and, and interact with everything else. So... Yeah, quite powerful. And then the other thing to remember is if you are doing any of your own, if you have got any self-hosted type hosting, you know, through a cPanel type hosting, a Linux cPanel hosting type service, then it's very, very easy to set up and install a Hubzilla hub of your own. And then don't forget also what I mentioned about its unique cloned nomadic identity where you can set up a mirror really of your channel or your profile elsewhere and be syncing to it for redundancy. You know, if there's any downtime or somebody deletes uh, your, your main hosting site or it's gone offline for a couple of days and you've got to sort a few problems out, you've got an immediate backup you can be posting from and it'll synchronize later on when your primary site comes back online. A lot of unique features. I really could not do justice, I don't think, to Hubzilla. And yes, yeah, sorry, I know it's probably been a very long video. 
but there will be some chapter links below the video where you can jump back and forth to different parts of this video, you know, for quick reference or if you want to share some, some part of it with somebody else. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And for those of you that are still awake, thanks for listening all the way through. And I think my next video is actually going to be another ham radio video. I'm planning just to show something interesting around, I think it's either six or seven different search functions that my Kenwood radio has got. And it's quite blown me away in that other radios don't have all that functionality. So I'm just going to show that off as well. So thanks very much and keep well, keep safe, keep healthy out there and keep wearing your mask and I'll see you in my next video.